Today's morning coffee vinyl side, The Lancers with George Cates All-Stars, The Dixieland Ball, 1957. The Lancers were a vocal quartet put together by students of famed Hollywood vocal coach Peter Lance in 1950, led by lead tenor Jerry Meacham and rounded out by Dick Burr, tenor, Carlton Linegren, bass, and Bob Porter, baritone. The group enjoyed success through the 50s barbershop revival and caught the white doo-wop wave, taking them from Hollywood to the Copacabana in New York and beyond to places like the London Palladium. Signed to Corel Records for this album, the Lancers availed themselves to the talents and resources of the label, which included George Cates, the label's A&R director, who conducted and arranged all the label's sessions for its roster of artists. Cates made his bones for Corel recording Bing Crosby, Danny Kaye, and the Andrews sisters, and was simultaneously the musical director for Lawrence Welk, conducting and arranging his orchestra up until the 1970s. This album appears to be an attempt to catch the Dixieland revival wave, and in some ways it's quite unique in the melding of Barbershop with Dixie. And there's no question, the orchestra is totally pro-level. But it's also way too clean, and dare I say, way too white to yield itself to any meditative consumption. There's no real swing here. And when you consider what was brewing, rock and roll, folk, and youth-orientated music, all in many ways a rejection of this kind of overproduced, unfeeling production. Well, you get it. These guys were not old either, but this was old man's music, even then. And in contrast to the Dixie we listened to the other day with Eddie Condon, this is saccharine. I wanted some molasses. And if this was a sexual encounter, it would end with no sweat on the bodies, no dishevelment or hair out of place. It would be buttoned down and empty, and both parties would be left wondering if it ever even happened. The only time it comes close to opening up to something real with actual sentiment is weary blues. But I had to wait until the second last song of the album to hear it. And even then. That said, I'm sure my grandfather would have enjoyed it, though to be fair, he might have found it a little too much. The last of the quartet got married in 1958, so I'm going to assume these guys at some point fell into their roles as 50s conformists and pumped out some kids in the 1960s that either grew up listening to Black Sabbath or found themselves deep down the punk and new wave rabbit hole. Who knows? I didn't look it up. I don't need to know, but I sure like the fantasy. <laughs>